Every single week, Hamster's Arcade Archives gets a new release of a classic arcade title from ages past, and more often than not, it's a shmup. So what's on tap this week? Is it cool enough to sink more time into? Is it fresh enough to do more than a credit feed? Is it worth our time, or will it end up being forgotten again? This week, the original arcade version of Athena's Strike Gunner STG has landed on Switch and PS4. There's definitely some intrigue here, so let's dive into it in this episode of Bullet Heaven. The Super NES version was kinda boring. Don't let us down now! Strike Gunner STG, a clever name, was developed by Athena and published by Tecmo to arcades in 1991. There are significant differences between this and the game we'd get on Super Famicom and Super NES in 1992, but that's a whole nother episode. And though it does lack some of the features its home release would end up getting, the arcade original is certainly worth a closer look. From a single-player perspective, Strike Gunner's gameplay is pretty simple in the grand scheme of things. Boasting typical 8-way movement and a 2-button setup that allows players to fire their Strike Gunner's main and special weapons, it shouldn't take long at all to get accustomed to the control scheme here. There's also a third button, but we'll get into that soon. Certain enemies will drop power-ups when destroyed that can be shot to be cycled through three possible pickups. Shot, which increases the amount of bullets that can be fired as well as the width of their effect. Speed, which obviously boosts up the player's shift speed, and energy, which we'll get into in a second. Generally speaking, both shot and speed can only be upgraded a couple of times before they're no longer available in the pickup cycle. This will allow players to focus instead on managing their special weapon energy. At the beginning of each stage, players are given a choice from 10 special weapons to arm their strike gunner. There's a lot to choose from, including lasers, homing missiles, shields, mines, and even additional fighters that flank the player 1942 style. Each of these weapons will require differing amounts of power to deploy, which is represented by a red gauge on the bottom of the screen. These can be refilled with the aforementioned energy pickups. Each stage here seems better suited for certain weapons. Choosing wisely will allow players to really dial in their routing through the game with weapons that'll make the job much more efficient. But there's a catch. Once a weapon is used, it can't be selected for the rest of the game. Even if another credit is used when the player's lives are expended, this makes the weight of each selection quite a bit more significant than a game like Earth Defense Force. Though it has a similar setup, Earth Defense Force's weapons could be reused and even leveled up. Not so here. Strike Gunner also has a neat feature when it comes to co-op games. Remember that third button we were talking about earlier? Well, players can perform a fusion where the lead player handles movement, primary fire, and their special weapon loadout, while the fused player can fire supporting shots in eight directions, independent of the lead player's movement. Two players with a strategized loadout can be devastating, but for those that need a helping hand from a stronger player, the fusion feature is an excellent addition. Of course, playing a co-op game also raises the difficulty significantly from the single-player game, so things aren't any easier even with another ship joining the fray. Strike Gunner is played over the course of seven stages, and while they aren't overly difficult, they're not especially easy either. While each stage isn't much to write home about, the special weapons can be pretty fun to use and experiment with. In the end, especially in terms of stage length, the arcade version of Strike Gunner feels much better balanced than its Super NES counterpart. I came away feeling as if the Super NES version of Strike Gunner was one of the most boring shooting experiences on the platform with its seemingly never-ending stages. Here though, the stages are pretty much just the right length, and its weapons make for a mildly strategic and somewhat fun time. Granted, bullet visibility can be a bit of an issue, and there's really not a whole lot to the game outside of the neat weapons or the co-op fusion. As such, you might not actually get as much out of it as I have. Strike Gunner is very straightforward with its scoring as well. Only enemy destruction counts towards the player's score. Power-ups are worth nothing outside of enhancing the Strike Gunner. Extends are awarded every 1.5 million points, so it can take quite a long time to even see the first one, if enemy destruction isn't constant and complete. It's so rudimentary that, with nothing more to consider in the way of technical score bonuses or mechanics, even the ACA score attack and caravan mainstays may have less staying power as a result. Regardless, these score modes do give Strike Gunner just a little more in the way of replayability once survival is achieved. <laughs> 
taking place in the far-flung year of 2008, making this historical fiction at this point. Pilots Mark McKenzie and Jane Sinclair are tasked with repelling your standard alien invasion. These invaders must have fifth-kinded a whole whack of Earth's forces too because the baddies in the first few stages don't look especially alien. From a presentation standpoint, Strike Gunner is a bit of a mixed bag. Some of the backgrounds are ho-hum, the enemies are somewhat uninspired, and there's those issues with bullet visibility. But the player ships and the attract scenes are pretty cool. It's pretty obvious that the player ship is modeled after the F-14, so fans of the Tomcat should like that quite a bit. The sound isn't so great though. The music is very sample heavy and because this was 1991, the bitrate couldn't possibly have been high enough to sound better. So this is all we could get. In this respect, the Super NES beats arcade from a quality and or clarity standpoint. It's not much, but it's one advantage. At the same time though, despite their drawbacks, I do like the music tracks in Strike Gunner. They work here. As always, various options for screen rotation, controls, difficulty, lives, and so forth are all present once again as is typical of any ACA release. You know the drill by now. So what are my final thoughts? Let's get into it. Strike Gunner controls well enough for it counts, has a manageable challenge, and features a well-rounded stage length in stark contrast to its later console iteration. Basically, it's well-balanced with responsive inputs. Being played on the Switch, this means that the PS4 version should feel just as good. The attract visuals are pretty cool, but generally speaking, Strike Gunner isn't especially interesting to look at, nor does it sound great due to its obviously sampled music sporting a noticeably low bitrate. With all of this said, though, it does manage a decent enough fun factor that it has me wanting to get better on a single credit. The scoring modes may not have long legs, but they do add a little more to what Strike Gunner's main game alone offers. This one was worth it to me. Raiden 3 has finished footage capture and a script is inbound. Next week also features a neat ACA release with Namco's Finest Hour, a really cool looking System 2 run and gunner. And what the what? Final Exurion has landed on the Switch and Steam for PC. I'm a sucker for those old Jellico shooters that made their way to Famicom that some lovingly call Famitrash. And I thought Exurion was pretty good Famitrash. I'm hyped for this release, so look forward to seeing it really soon on Bullet Heaven. Until then, we'll see you all in the next episode. <laughs>